Good afternoon, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, pa Ong Kang Yong. Uh, it's really a bit shocking, actually, you know, when I found out three days ago uh, after uh, Leonard actually uh, sent me the invitation, I think, like three or four weeks ago. I thought at the time it was only one of those uh, small discussions at the Rajaranam school. You know, so, and then uh, one of the staff, uh, Dr. Meli Anthony, you know, suddenly told me that it's going to be the distinguished you know, public lecture. So it gave me nervous, and then I had to prepare you know, the uh, 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 text you know, to, you know, to read. Uh, you know, because uh, I always get nervous if I have to talk about you know, maritime affairs you know, in front of uh, my mentor, actually, Pa Kwa Chong Guan, you know, because you know, he knows the subject you know, more than any other else. And I learned a lot uh, from him uh, when I was at the uh, Rajarana, uh, no, IDSS at the time, in 2001, yeah, Pak Kwa. But uh, really, it's uh, an honor, you know, to be uh, invited to deliver, you know, a lecture, quote unquote. Let let let's you know put this quote unquote, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, at you know, this uh, uh, I think you know, prestigious you know series. It's, it's really, uh, I think you know, a rare opportunity, you know, for me. I was just told even my boss, my guru, Pak Yusuf Wanandi, has never been invited to this forum <laughs> so far. You know, he, you know, he's not here, so I can say that. Uh, but so we will remember to invite him <laughs> next time. <laughs> uh, and, and second point that I would like to make before I go to the subject, uh, when we first in the campaign team of Pak Jokowi uh, uh, came up with the concept, you know, we didn't realize that it would actually attract a lot of discussion both within Indonesia and also outside Indonesia about this concept. So that's why, you know, we started working on this concept after, you know, the uh, concept was launched, you know, during the debate on the 22nd, you know, of June, and then now it's become, you know, one of the key uh, 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 framework, if you like, that will guide, you know, the uh, uh, new government in Indonesia uh, for the next, you know, five years, and hopefully, you know, of course, for the next 10 years. And uh, uh, he cannot go on more than 10 years because of the limits. Uh, Ambassador Andre Hadi is also uh, here, and, 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 and I think you know, he can also answer some of your difficult questions later, <laughs> because he's more appropriate person to answer, because he's you know, in, in the government, I'm not. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, only around the government, <laughs> and helping him, uh, pa, uh, helping Pak Jokowi whenever you know, he needs my help. Um, more than uh, six decades ago, uh, the founders of the Republic of Indonesia uh, characterized you know, our foreign policy as mendayung di antara dua karang, you know, or rowing between you know, two uh, reefs. And, and I think that description you know, reflected the geopolitical reality of that <coughs> time, uh, which divided the world you know, into two opposing you know, ideological blocks. And within the two blocks, you know, Indonesia opted you know, to stay non-aligned. And together you know, with other uh, great nations of the developing world, uh, we formed you know, the non-aligned movement. Uh, we work very hard you know, to build you know, our young nations, you know, to bring about prosperity to our people, and to preserve and maintain you know, Indonesia's independence. And we stayed the course you know, of Mendayung di Antara Dua Karang uh, uh, for uh, many, many years and decades. And we did that you know, by staying true to our principle you know, in our foreign policy, which is the principle of Bebas Active. That divided world you know, came to an end you know, with the uh, collapse you know, of the Berlin Wall, in 1989, and much has happened, you know, between that day and today. Uh, yet the peace dividend uh, did not really, you know, come uh, forward. Our dream of a benign world, you know, our desire, you know, for a just world, and our craving, you know, for a more peaceful world, has not been fulfilled, you know, with the end of the Cold War. And in fact, the world, you know, in which we live, you know, has become more complex. The challenges that we face, you know, have become even more severe. We are now, I think, in these regions, you know, at the moment, at, you know, at the most important juncture, you know, of great transformation taking place uh, in the world today. Uh, the world is no longer dominated by one single dominant power or a group of powers. Uh, power and wealth, you know, are being uh, redistributed across the globe. Uh, most of this power uh, re redistribution is taking place in the Asia Pacific regions, and the U.S., even though it's still a preeminent power uh, in the regions but other powers are also on the rise. And China and India are on the rise. Japan is regaining its you know, major power status, and ASEAN is obviously also on the rise. And within Indonesia, uh, within ASEAN, 
Indonesia is a rising regional power. And indeed, you know, as the center of gravity uh, of the uh, geopol uh, center of geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, gravity is shifting to East Asia, uh, many expect you know the arrival of the, an Asian you know century. And yet, uh, we also realize you know that the promise of peace and prosperity cannot be taken for granted. And in fact, uh, we see disturbing signs uh, about the emerging rivalry you know among major powers, competitions you know for influence among major powers in the region is no longer a possibility, but it has become a reality. So Indonesia is aware you know, of the growing importance of the maritime domain for the future prosperity and stability you know, of the regions. And that unfortunately, the rivalry among the major powers you know, will take place you know, in the maritime domain, in the area what you know, we prefer to call the Pacific and Indian Oceans uh, regions, or the Pasindo. So we try to find, you know, a new term, you know, because Indo-Pacific has been uh, claimed, you know, by Americans and Australians. So, you know, we come up with the Pasindo, the Pacific and the Indian Ocean uh, region. And to make matter worse, you know, maritime domain in East Asia, you know, is still characterized by a number of unresolved territorial disputes and the growing competition over access to maritime-based resources. And Indonesia and also ASEAN is at the center of the ongoing strategic transformation. Indonesia is in between the two strategic oceans where the quest for influence among the major powers you know, will be fought. And therefore, our biggest challenge now is no longer rowing between the two reefs, but we now have to berlayar the dua samudra or sail you know, in the two oceans. And the foreign policy question you know, uh, facing Indonesia, therefore, you know, is this. How should we position ourselves and respond? to the ongoing dynamic you know, around us. So this is basically the background you know, of the idea of the global maritime fulcrum that you know, Pat Jokowi uh, began to uh, 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 talk about uh, since you know, June uh, last year. The basic principles of our foreign policy will not change. Uh, Indonesia's foreign policy will continue to be guided you know, by the principles of Bebas Active, by the imperative of serving our national interest and you know, to, to fulfill the constitutional obligations to contribute to the international peace and justice. However, the way, you know, Indonesia conducts, you know, its foreign policy, especially under the current government, uh, is changing. And instead of being reactive, directionless, and lack of focus, so Indonesia's foreign policy is now guided by what, you know, the, the, the ruling party call uh, a trisakti, you know, a doctrine, expounded you know, by the founding father of the republic, uh, which was you know, pa, uh, President Sukarno. And, 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 and never forget that this government is basically you know, the government of the uh, uh, PDIP, the uh, Indonesia's Democratic Party of, of Struggle. So you know, within that you know, uh, three sakti uh, doctrine, so Indonesia's foreign policy will strive to restore Indonesia's political sovereignty. We will pursue a foreign policy that re-establish economic self-reliance and resilience for our nations without ignoring the interdependent nature of contemporary global economy. Our foreign policy will reflect Indonesia's own identity as a sovereign nation, blessed with historical depth and cultural strength, a national personality that will define Indonesia's national and international identity as a good and responsible member of the international community. So in order to achieve those objectives, it is imperative for Indonesia to undertake, uh, to undertake a strategic repositioning. And the global maritime fulcrum you know, idea provides a conceptual framework you know, for such you know, strategic repositioning. And as President Jokowi himself declared, we will put forward Indonesia's identity as a maritime nation and an archipelagic state you know, in the conduct of our foreign policy. Uh, a, a small note, you know, some people translate the poros maritime dunia as the global maritime axis. Uh, that doesn't really, you know, sound nice, you know, axis. So it's basically what we meant, you know, when we use the term poros, is more, you know, I think, or closer to the term fulcrum, you know, which is basically the point of support, you know, of the two oceans. You know, if you look at the map, and then Indonesia right there in the middle, and then, you know, we do have rights and obligations to support, you know, the two oceans. So fulcrum or poros in, in that sense, you know, as, as a fulcrum. So I think uh, fulcrum is more uh, uh, appropriate uh, terms, you know, to uh, translate 
the term poros, you know, in the original uh, idea of the uh, poros maritime dunia. Uh, as a maritime archipelagic state, we will secure our maritime interest, you know, by integrating the two strategic seas, you know, the Indian Oceans and the Pacific Ocean as the focus of our foreign policy. We will work with our neighbors to resolve both maritime and land boundaries. We will defend our maritime sovereignty and sovereign rights, protect our marine resources, and ensure the security and safety of our seas. We will play an active role in finding solutions you know, to the South China Sea dispute. And we will do this you know, through the application of the UN Convention and Law of the Sea, maritime diplomacy, naval enhancement, and also regional maritime cooperations. So within that context, you know, how should then we understand you know, the idea uh, of the uh, global maritime fulcrum? First, you know, the global maritime fulcrum can be seen as a vision. So as a vision, you know, the GMF, you know, we, let's call it a GMF, is about what kind of Indonesia that we want to build in the future. So it's, it is basically a vision. So it is a national call you know, to return to Indonesia's true identity as a maritime nation and as an archipelagic state. Uh, and in order you know, to build Indonesia as a maritime nation characterized by unity, prosperity, and also, of course, dignity. As a long-term vision, the GMF wants you know, to see Indonesia as a maritime power respected by extra-regional powers, friendly to all regional partners, and feared by any potential regional and international bully you know, who intends to disrupt Southeast Asia's stability and undermines ASEAN unity and centrality. Uh, dream, this dream, it's okay to have a dream, right? <laughs> so second, the, the GMF should also be seen as a doctrine. So it can be a doctrine. You know, and as a doctrine, the GMF provides a direction, a sense of common purpose, and also the unity of actions. So as a doctrine, uh, President Jokowi calls the nations and all Indonesians to look you know, uh, at ourselves you know, as a global maritime fulcrum a power you know, between the two oceans. And this doctrine emphasized the geogra geographical, uh, geopolitical, and also geoeconomic reality of Indonesia, whose future depend on and will affect the dynamics of the Indian and the Pacific Oceans. And third, the GMF can also be seen as a set of you know, development agenda. And then as a set of development agenda, the GMF also provides a set of concrete area of works that the government intends to carry out in the next five years and hopefully, of course, in the next 10 years. Uh, for example, the Jokowi government you know, has pledged you know, to improve inter-island connectivity, acquire shipbuilding and ship repairing capacity, boost you know, the fishing industry, develop sea transportation, ensure maritime security, and strengthen uh, Indonesia's maritime defense. And defined as a vision, a doctrine, and a set of development agenda, the GMF is therefore more than just a foreign policy doctrine. It embraces you know, a wider aspect of nation building. Indeed, you know, as spelled out by the President Jokowi at the East Asia Summit in Beijing last year, the GMF you know, has five main pillars. The first is maritime culture. So here, you know, as a, you know, when, when we want to uh, 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 we, we want to restore and revive you know, our maritime culture and identity. As, as a country with more than 17,000 know, islands, uh, Indonesia needs to realize and understand that its identity, prosperity, and the country's future will define by how we manage the oceans. We should learn, relearn, and unlearn everything about the sea. We should teach our children and grandchildren that the sea is not a mystery, but an opportunity. We will teach our children and grandchildren that the sea is not to be feared, but to be embraced. And I think this is a very important uh, uh, aspect of, of, of education programs in this area you know, for Indonesia, because even my children no longer remember how to sing a very old song that you know, I think my generation and Pahandi's generation are familiar with, you know, that we were taught in the, in the past that you know, our ancestors are actually you know, the sea, fairies, you know, people of the sea, you know, nenek moyang kami adalah orang pelaut. And no, it's actually, I don't, I don't think that uh, many kids, you know, love, you know, swimming. <laughs> so we need to revive, you know, that, you know, a, a, a maritime culture in Indonesia. 
Second is maritime resources, the second pillar of this uh, global maritime fulcrum uh, is maritime resources. We will utilize, preserve, and secure our maritime resources. We will focus on ensuring our food sovereignty and security. We will empower our fishermen you know, as main pillar of food security and uh, uh, food sovereignty and security. Our marine resources will be used for benefits of the Indonesian people. So the third pillar is the maritime infrastructure. Uh, we will prioritize you know, the development of maritime infrastructure and connectivity. And we will focus on building what Pak Jokowi call as the toll out or the sea highway, the sea toll. Uh, it's basically you know, uh, the plan you know, to connect all those islands you know, through the developments of port and uh, 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 ships and the deep sea port, logistic, shipbuilding, and you know, also uh, maritime tourism. So in a very simple language, it's basically in a, you know, the plan you know, to have a fishing fleet, trading fleet, tourism fleet, and then of course, you know, naval you know, fleet. So the fourth pillar you know, is a maritime diplomacy. So we appeal to our partners you know, across the regions and also in the world to intensify maritime cooperation. We will intensify our diplomacy to seek support from regional and international partners in our efforts to build Indonesia's maritime infrastructure. We will ensure our maritime sovereignty by speeding up the negotiations to resolve border delimitation problems with our neighbors, boosting the security of our outer islands, and securing our maritime resources within our territorial waters and the exclusive economic zone. We will also work with our partners to manage you know, and seek solution to the territorial and maritime disputes in the regions. We will work with our friends and partners you know, to eliminate sources of maritime conflicts and frictions such as illegal fishing, the breach of relations of sovereignty, territorial dispute, and environmental damages you know, to the sea. Uh, for us, the sea, the sea should unite, not divide you know, nations. And the fifth pillar is maritime safety, security, and defense. So as a fulcrum of the two oceans, Indonesia is obliged you know, to develop and strengthen you know, its maritime defense capability. Uh, this is needed not only in order to defend our sovereignty and security of our maritime resources, but also to fulfill our responsibili responsibility you know, in ensuring safety of navigations and maritime security in the region. And the Jokowi government has pledged you know, uh, uh, to allocate 1.5% of our GDP you know, to achieve this. Uh, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have to admit also uh, at this point that the GMF idea is still a work in progress. So various government agencies are still formulating their respective work, pl work plan on various aspects you know, of the concept. And as such, you know, it will continue to evolve. The bottom line, however, is this. We want to transform Indonesia into a maritime power capable of defending its sovereignty, securing its maritime resources from thief, protecting its citizens you know, whenever they are, and cooperate with our partners in ensuring and maintaining good order at sea. So the foreign policy of Jokowi government will be guided you know, by this desire. So Indonesia's ongoing efforts to stop illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing is one manifestation of the government's determination to implement the global maritime fulcrum as a doctrine. Indonesia's active economic diplomacy through bilateral and multilateral platforms reflect the government's efforts to implement the Global Maritime Forum uh, Fulcrum as a set of development agenda. Before I conclude this uh, lecture, so allow me to address one last point. Uh, given the renewed emphasis on the maritime agenda and the intentions to become a global maritime fulcrum, many wonder uh, whether Indonesia's foreign policy will depart know, from the previous path that put premium on regional harmony, unity, and solidarity, especially you know, uh, uh, within the ASEAN context. So the, the, the question is really, and I think a lot of people you know, associate me with all these ideas that you know, Indonesia will quit you know, ASEAN. <laughs> it's, it's very because I wrote that piece in 2009 and opposed ASEAN foreign policy. Uh, so the question is really, you know, will Indonesia's foreign policy under President Jokowi be radically, diff uh, radically different from the previous government. So I can assure you, you know, never mind that article 2009, eh? uh, I can assure you uh, this is not the case. Indonesia's earlier commitment and agenda will not change. We will work you know, to strengthen Indonesia's role within ASEAN and beyond. 
we are committed to ensure Indonesia strate uh, Southeast Asia strategic autonomy. We are determined to prevent the region from becoming a site you know, for strategic rivalry among the major powers. We will manage a balanced relationship with all great powers. We will also work with our friends to ensure that ASEAN centrality, uh, by, uh, to ensure ASEAN centrality by enhancing ASEAN credibility, strengthening its capacity, and preserving its unity. So we will continue also to promote international economic cooperation. We will not withdraw you know, from our international and regional commitments, but we will work you know, to strengthen our economy in responding to the challenges of globalization, regional economic integrations, and the challenges of the free trade arrangement. While we uphold our commitment to the ASEAN economic community and also to the regional comprehensive economic partnership of the RCEP, we will also uh, see the need to make sure that our national interests would not be harmed. So as a middle power, uh, we will continue also to play a constructive role in addressing global problems through multilateral processes. Uh, we will work within the G20. We will continue to share our experience in democracy building and participate in peacekeeping, peace building, and conflict resolution. We will promote also international development cooperations through the framework of the South-South South and Triangular cooperations and work with others to find solutions to the global problems such as climate change, poverty, food, and energy security, and also you know, human security. However, some priorities will change. Uh, that's, I think, normal. And for example, you know, citizen protections will be very high on our agenda. While we work to ensure better job opportunities at home, we will make sure that the dignity and the safety of every Indonesian citizens abroad, especially you know, our migrant workers, is respected and upheld by our friends. The era where the rights of our migrant workers are violated and their dignity insulted uh, will be put to an end by working with our friends and partners uh, to improve the vocational trainings at home we will ensure that Indonesian workers will be better equipped to compete abroad. So in other words, the Indonesia's foreign policy under uh, Jokowi administrations will not be too different you know, from Indonesia you know, under the previous uh, governments. So it is still an Indonesia that is aware of its limitations <coughs> and strength. And the only difference perhaps is that Indonesia under President Jokowi is no longer an Indonesia that is shy to speak its mind and defends its own interests vigorously. Thank you.